Hey guys, it's me again, Brandy, coming at you with another super easy barn door. I love beginner barn doors, easy barn doors. We all need to be able to make these to put in our spaces, and I'm going to show you how today. So to start off, we're going to measure our door, and we're going to include the trim that's at the top and on the sides in our measurements. The very first measurement you're going to take is the width of your door. For mine, it's about 36 inches, and yours may differ. You're gonna write that down and then take your length measurement. And that includes the trim that sits on top of the door. Next, I cut down some one by sixes to the width of the door first, two pieces, one for the top and one for the bottom. Then I cut the length pieces and I did the length of the door minus 11 inches for the top and bottom pieces. Then I'm pocket holing these length pieces in the ends and they will connect to the bottom and top width pieces. I will include a list of materials in the description below and then also printable plans on my blog. Once you're done pocket holing and gluing and screwing, you should end up with a shape like this, which I'm gonna sand down with the skater sandpaper. I then cut my shiplap pieces to the exact width of the door and I decided to paint them first before attaching so they'd have time to dry as I was assembling the door. Now that I have the face frame, I'm going to go ahead and glue and attach the shiplap pieces with a brad nail and some construction adhesive to the back of that frame. Now your pieces should go all the way to the end of the door. I'm using scrap pieces so they didn't quite make it to the width of my door but yours should, if you're able to remake this, make it to the width of the door and it'll span that entire area. Then you just glue and nail into the frame. I am using three quarter inch nails for this portion and then I'll be using one and a half inch nails for the outside frame. This is what it should look like when you're done with this step. And as you can see, those middle pieces are painted and then I used prime boards for the face frame. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut down some 1x2s to the exact length of the door at this point and then use 1.5 inch brad nails to glue those 1x2s into the outside of the door to create a frame. Then I'll cut the 1x2s to the width afterwards and it should come out looking something like this. You can use primed boards and that will help a lot. Again, I'm just using scraps that I had on hand to get this door up and gone, but if I were remaking it, I would remake everything with pre-primed pieces. Next, I'm sanding around the outside and the face, and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish painting the face of the door. I'm using some spray paint. I love the color. I'll include it in the description. Now, since this door is hanging outside of a closet, I am not gonna finish the back. It'll just be an unfinished back. But if you needed it to be finished, you could use some really good sealer and primer and do that exact same final steps to the back as well. Seal it and then paint it. Now I'm gonna start with the hardware installation and you can see some holes in this wall already and it's because I used their drywall anchors just to test them out and they were crap. So I would suggest using a one by six as a header board using construction glue and this Power Pro screws right into the studs and then you can attach the hardware anywhere on that header board. Here I'm just using a one by six pre-primed piece of pine and I'm using some construction adhesive to attach it to the wall and then those Power Pro screws are going right into studs. This will make it so that I don't have to worry about where my rails attach. They can attach anywhere on this pine header board. And these Power Pro screws don't need any pre-drilling. They drill right through the board and into the stud. Now that I have this header board installed, I can move on to installing the rail. I'm marking the height of where I need my door to go, where the rail is going to be installed, and then I'm using the rail to mark where I need to drill holes. I'm trying to give you a step-by-step because step you guys asked. So every track that you get will give you a measurement plus your door for where to install your track. So this one was one and five sixteenths plus my door height plus three eighths. So I added that all together and that's how I came up with 88 and three eighths. Actually, it's closer to that, but we're going with this. And that is how high I've marked where to put the track in, and then I held the track up and marked where I need to drill. Now I'm pre-drilling with some mock blue spider bits where the lag bolts are going to be installed. And then I'm putting those lag bolts in and securing them. I'm using some hardware that I found on Amazon, and it's kind of tricky because it came in like seven different pieces. 
After it's all installed, it's really sturdy. It was kind of hard to get installed, but it was super budget friendly on Amazon, so it was worth it in the end. Once this rail is all installed, you can fill in the holes and repaint the header board to match and then remove the door on the closet. Okay, so I hung this up on the track and I marked where I wanted the top of my door to go right on here. And now I'm just gonna pre-drill out these holes and make sure they're straight with my square right here. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other end. And I am using my spider blade. I'm gonna use this spider auger bit. It's called the stinger auger bit. I absolutely love this more than a spade bit more than a Forstner bit. It goes super fast, it's really tough, it's gonna make quick work of this. Now it's time to remove this old door and I'm just popping out the hinges right there and pulling the door right off. Then I just brought the new door in on its rollers and hooked it onto the track. And there you have it. The entire door all finished and we love it so much. Super fast and really easy barn door. Don't forget to give me a follow if you like DIY projects just like this. I try to come up with them as often as I can, as well as a bunch of beginner tool reviews and other fun DIY projects. Hit that bell, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.